see Chip and Robber in the shop, and it's time to finally tackle that nasty transmission uh, gearbox uh, on the dyno that we that we uh, first saw all those months ago. Um, if you look down in here, you'll see that you know the the case is quite rusted. As you can see, things are pretty darn rusty inside, way down in there. Um, there is this main drive gear here, and then underneath it, there is a, uh, a cluster gear uh, down in there that you really can't see. But it involves driving out. First thing I need to do is drive out this pin so that all of those gears and bearings will just fall into the bottom of the, of the case. And then I can separate. This separates into two parts. One goes this way, one goes this way. Separate this out and pull all this out and get a good look at all of it. Okay, so we're out at location two and I brought the transmission parts out here to clean them. I'm going to use citric acid. Citric acid is very mild. It's used in things like soap making. It's also what they make like sour uh, flavored candies from and stuff like that. But it's really good at removing rust uh, in a good enough concentration or if you soak it long enough. So, and, it, and it's not so acidic that it damages the good metal. So We've got the cluster gear here from the transmission, the, trans the uh, transmission case, and then also the gear shift, which you can see is quite rusted. But, um, anyway, I'm going to dip these. I've got a five-gallon bucket here with uh, about two gallons of water in it. I have two pounds of citric acid. The ratio normally is about one pound of citric acid per uh, gallon of water for this kind of use. And uh, so we'll let this soak for a little while and see what it does to this rust. Okay, it's been about an hour. I stuck the shifter in here too. Um, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, but there's a good little reaction going on there with a lot of bubbles and stuff coming up. And so that'll go on. I, this isn't happening fast enough for me, so I think I'm going to leave this overnight. And uh, that means it'll probably turn black. Uh, the pieces will, but that's okay. I'll just scrub it down with some baking soda to neutralize the action. And then uh, scrub them down real good and paint them. Okay, so it's been over 24 hours. I soaked this shifter. You remember how rusted it looked before. Soak this shifter in that citric acid bath for over 24 hours and well, it looks a lot better. So we'll just get in here with some baking soda and uh, soapy water. Clean it out real good and uh, should be ready to rebuild. And here's that cluster gear from the transmission. As you, you can see, these are the teeth that were sitting low. The teeth that were sitting really low in the transmission and got the bulk of the rust damage. This is some very serious pitting. Very serious pitting and honestly if I were to put that back in there I'm sure the teeth would break eventually. I don't, I don't know how long I could run it like this but that's really bad pitting. And uh, you know, even if it, even if the teeth didn't break completely, little bits of the teeth may break off, in which case they wind up in the oil and can destroy other gears. Um, I've been looking for a new cluster gear for the transmission because I suspect it would be in bad shape. I think I may have found a used one, which would be good. I know a new one is very, very expensive because these are rare. Okay, trying to drop our rusty old gearbox into the citric acid. I finally got a large enough container to submerge it completely. So we'll stick it in. Well, I thought it would submerge it completely. <laughs> and I can add a little more water, I guess. I've got quite a bit of citric acid dissolved in this water. I've got five pounds of stuff dissolved in this water, so it ought to be fairly fast acting. But uh, this is the last thing we need to clean up before we can put this transmission back together. So we'll get her done. And I've got the case painted just because I didn't want it to rust, but uh, I've uh, exposed one of these, or both of these cracks so you can get a better look at them. Uh, and cleaned them up really good with a fine wire brush. We will smear some JB Weld into these and see what we get. But yeah, these are pretty serious cracks and now we know why. Uh, there was rust set up in it and there was no oil in the transfer case. But who knows how long they'd been actually running it like this because, I mean, the gears 
and shafts were so wallered out and worn uh, from, from dirt and things like that 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 uh, I have to believe they ran it like this um, as long as they could until it probably just finally seized up or locked up. And that's probably why Dyna got put up in the first place. But um, we'll get a little JB Weld on this. We'll clean this really good with a Dremel. And then we'll go on either side, on either end of the crack, we'll go beyond it a little bit just to make sure we get good coverage. Smear it in there, let it sit for 24 hours and go. One of the things I was worried about is when I put this pin back in here, this holds the cluster gear uh, in the bottom of the transmission. I was concerned that I would really have to drive it in hard, uh, but I did a test and that, and that it would disturb that repair. But uh, I did a test fit on this and it looks like it's going to go in okay. So I'm not too worried about um, disturbing that repair, uh, you know, once I start to put the tranny back together. So, but yeah, ooh, those are some ugly, ugly cracks. I mean, ugly cracks. I'm, I'm just, I'm trying to, you know, this thing sits two feet off the ground. <laughs> and I'm trying to think, you know, in what world... I mean, that kind of, you know, explosion or damage or whatever could occur to a transmission case. It, I don't see any signs that it hit anything. Um, the only thing I can think of is that they may have just run it without oil until it overheated and just, you know, sort of exploded. But uh, anyway, I'll try to get it, get a temporary fix on this. I've already ordered the new transfer case, but, uh, and so we'll have it on hand uh, for a later date. All right, so there's our repair. Just simply mix up some JB Weld and uh, mix it up there and then slather it on. Hopefully that'll hold back the oil uh, for a while until we can get our new transfer case. But uh, that'll at least get us to contentment and maybe, maybe even give us a little bit of activity before uh, I need to rebuild it again. <laughs> But uh, I don't want to have to rebuild it this way, but I have no choice because we've got to get Dinah moving. And uh, the land that she sits on right now has been sold. I have a week to get her off the property, and I've got to be able to drive her onto a low boy trailer. So that's the way it is. I'm telling you, I like to see you. So, so this is a Borg, <laughs> this is a Borg Warner heavy duty industrial transmission. It's a T87D. Transmission, which is which was put in lots of things, combines and other kinds of harvesters, uh, this backhoe, forklifts, things like that. It's a heavy-duty transmission. This was also used in Ford light trucks and international old international harvester trucks, Jeeps, um, just all kinds of applications. The difference between this T87 and most of those other T87s is that this is built for an industrial application which means all of the gears are cut in reverse direction on a Jeep for instance all these gears would go this way instead of this way so finding you know replacement parts for this is tough on a machine this old but we found some and uh, so we're going to go ahead and put this thing back together. It's going to be a temporary deal because we know we've got these cracks in the transfer case. But we've just run out of time. And we have to be able to move Dinah uh, by the end of uh, this week. So we only have a few days left to get this going. So you're making faces at me. I'm just making faces. <laughs> <laughs> I told them there were 572 parts or something like that. A lot that. of little parts. And, um, you know, the, the, it, it's pretty simple to assemble. The only thing you need is a, the hammer and, uh, uh, you know, a couple of wrenches. So, uh, we need to get this thing assembled. So, let's do, let's do this. Right, Robert? Yes, let's do this.
So we've got our main shaft mostly assembled now. This is first gear, this is second gear, and this is the synchro assembly and also acts as a shifter. Um, this is third gear and the input shaft. This input shaft is a very rare <laughs> uh, piece. There are no more. I could not find any more. And it's worn, you know, you look at the gears, they're kind of pitted and stuff like that, but I have no choice but other than to use it. Um, the, uh, the What makes it rare is the length of this shaft right here and the way it's made, because it's hollow, there are splines inside, and it's short. This whole thing is only four and a half inches long. That's because this particular input shaft is made to fit an old Borg Warner, what they call a velvet drive which is the forward and reverser and torque converter on the backhoe. Velvet drives are still made. Um, Borg Warner no longer makes them. They sold it off to some other company. Um, and then that company even changed the name, the brand name to Velvet Drive. And they're used in marine, uh, using boats and things like that, mostly. But they have been used in tractors and other industrial equipment. Um, so anyway, this shaft is unique because it fits into the back of the velvet drive. And so finding a replacement was very hard. The other problem we had with it is that the old shaft that was in the transmission, and this is a new one, but the old shaft uh, was really badly damaged by rust, particularly on this piloted end. These two are made to meet like this and to slide in. And inside of here would be 16 needle bearings that surround this piloted shaft so that both of these can turn independently because they turn at different speeds. <clears throat> However, this was so badly damaged by rust and the shaft was so badly damaged by rust that there was no way we could put 16 needle, new needle bearings in there, but it would be in a really bad shape, run really rough, and who's to say how well it would run? It was just that torn up. So what I asked a local machinist to do was to install a hard aluminum bronze bushing in here instead of the needle bearings. And as you can see, it's got a little oil groove in there so that it can spin on this shaft like what we call a plane bearing or a bushing. Um, and he did a beautiful job. I mean, the clearance on that is probably four thousandths of an inch, which is about what it is with this, with the other gears. And it just spins beautifully, as you can see. It's going to be, it's going to work out very nice. If for whatever reason, the this system doesn't work out in the future and it needs to be rebuilt again, the nice thing about having done this is that he has not dug into this gear at all. Um, he just pressed in this bushing with some Loctite and, and left it there. It should serve well for our needs for a long, long time. But in case it doesn't, this can be cut out wallered out and a hardened sleeve pressed in where we can put the needle bearings back in. So um, that's, you know, that's a fix for this. And anybody who's got one of these old industrial transmissions, um, just so you know, this is a potential repair for that um, or, you know, make work. I would like to take this opportunity to thank um, Thomas Schmidt over at the Thomas Schmidt Homestead Project because he was a big help uh, offering advice and help in actually finding parts for this. Um, we weren't able to find new parts all the way across, but you know what? What we have here is going to work just fine, and, and it'll work. Uh, it'll be great. One other thing I was at, one thing I was able to find was a new second gear for this. This is the one I'm touching. This is brand new. And again, finding these gears is tough because of the way, the direction that they're cut. The... Uh, the, the, uh, the gears are cut in the opposite direction on these from normal transmissions because it's an industrial engine. The reason for that is, is because industrial engines spin the opposite direction from a regular, say, passenger vehicle engine. Um, I think that has to do with cooling. But anyway, we found a new second gear. Here is the old second gear. And as you can see, it's kind of beat up, pitted, rusted. But the what was really bad was this bushing on the inside, this bronze bushing. It is so <laughs> chewed up that when I pulled this apart, it was sitting on this main shaft. It literally just wobbled like that. That's how bad it was. It was filled with dirt, crud, rust. And this is probably the reason why this backhoe was parked in the first place. 
something went wrong with the transmission and it was parked. So, <clears throat> you know, I mean, obviously the transfer case is in such bad shape from cracks. I mean, who knows what happened, but uh, it could be that a crack occurred, it drained the oil, we didn't know it, you know, they ran the, they ran the thing and ran out of oil, burned it up, who knows. But this bushing was in really bad, uh, this bushing was in really bad shape and uh, so bad it's smooth. Now normally there are little oil pores in here, uh, but as you can see it's so badly worn they've disappeared. The main shaft was in really bad condition too. So I'm glad we were able to find a second gear and this is first, second, third. And so we'll just, you know, we'll put it back together and work with it. That's, it's what we have, so it's what we'll do.